Tying Knots in the Devil's Tail was written by Gail Gardner. Gail Gardner was a cowboy of great renown in northern Arizona. He was legendary for coming down to Whiskey Row after the work was done on the weekends and hanging out at the Kentucky Bar, or as the cowboys called it, the Cane Tuck Bar. All of these uh, elements appear in this song. In this uh, somewhat folk legend type of song, there's two cowboys that are really up to no good. To tell you the truth, they're rustling cattle. You see, in the uh, brush country of Arizona, it was easy for the calves to run away and get free from their mamas, uh, wean themselves as it were, and sometimes there were unbranded mavericks out on the range. If rustlers could get onto that ranch or that private ground and round up those mavericks before they got caught, they could have quite a little herd started in some other area where they had their own land. However, it was punishable by hanging in that day to steal another man's livestock. So these guys could be in really big trouble. As they walked down the road, deciding that they're fed up with the regular wrestling work of using a running iron to alter a brand or to draw a new brand on these calves, these mavericks, they decide they're gonna to go to town, they go to the Cane Tuck Bar, and while they're on their way to town, they uh, decide that they're gonna get pretty oiled up inside. That means get drunk. They get drunk in town, and on their way back to camp, they run into the worst guy you can run into out on the range. But they decide that he's a guy that they know how to deal with, because he's got horns, hooves, and a tail. He's the devil, and he says he's gonna wrangle them right into hell. But instead, like good team ropers, they got a good header and a good healer in Buster Jiggs and Sandy Bob. They tie the devil up. And uh, there's one term in this song that a lot of people miss. They say they necked him to a black jack oak. And that meant that they literally did what they did to a lot of cattle out on the range. They actually tied him up by the neck to an oak, little oak post or an oak tree or a small, small tree to keep him from running away. And that's when they necked the devil to a black jack oak. And then uh, the rest is in the song. Uh, you'll hear what happens. Uh, again, I had another thrill in my career in that I got to hear Gail Gardner recite this poem at the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering in Elko. He was 100 years old. He stood up on a cane. He was blind in one eye and had an eye patch. And he was pretty crippled up, but he stood up and recited this poem. Now, I don't do every word exactly like Gail Gardner did it. And that would have made Gail Gardner mad because he objected if anybody changed even one word in this song. But I thought when I recorded it that if I used his original language, people really wouldn't understand what was going on. For example, they're taking their ponies and they're running irons and maybe a dog or two. And they allowed their brand on every long-eared cap to come within their view. Now many a long-eared doggie that don't bush up by day had his old hide sizzled and his old ears whittled in the most artistic way. Then Sandy Bob says one day as he throws his old seagull down, which is really a bedroll, but I changed it to cigar like a lot of other people did. Throws his old cigar down. I'm tired of cow biography and by God, I'm going to town. Or I'm tired of cowography, which is a, uh, you know, the, the form of calligraphy out on the range, which is changing the brand. So I tried to change a few words so you can understand. He also says, uh, Buster, Jiggs, and Sandy Bob had a roe deer camp last fall. The old cowboys referred to rounding up cattle as a roe deer coming from the Spanish word rodear. And that's where the word rodeo comes from. Sorry, peach with the other jack pines real tall. Old Buster Jigs and Sandy Bob had a round of camp last fall. They taking their ponies and running irons and maybe a dog or two. They allowed their brand and every long eared cap that come within their view. Now many a long eared doggy, the ones that don't bush up by day, had their old hide sizzled and their old ears whittled in the most artistic way. 
And Sandy Bobby said one day she throwed his old cigar down. I'm tired of this choreography. By God, I'm going to town. <laughs> Well, saddle them up and hit them a lope and how them boys could ride. Them was the days that old cowboys could hold up there inside. They started out at the Kentuck Bar at the head of that whiskey road. And they wound up over at the depot house about 40 drinks below. They set some up and they turns them around and did the other way. I swear the God forsaken truth, them boys are drunk that day. They saddled up and they headed for camp and they's packed in a pretty good load. Who should they meet but the devil himself come prancing down the road? Well, the devil said, you cowboy skunks better hunt your hole. I am the devil from Hill's Rim Rock gonna gather in your soul. Sandy Bob said, devil be damned, we boys is kind of tight. But you ain't gonna get no cowboy soul without one hell of a fight. He swung his rope, he swung it straight, he also swung it true. He caught the devil with a hula hand loop and taking his down his two. Now Buster Jigs was a Riata man with his raw hide coiled up knee. He shook it out and made a big old loop and he latched the devil's hind feet. They stretched him out and they tailed him down and the irons was getting hot. They cropped and swallowed, forked his old ears and branded him up a lot. And they left him there in the CRA peach, neck to a black jack oak. Before they done it, they tied a few knots in his tail just for a joke. So if you're ever up there in the CRA peach and you hear one a hell of a wail, just the old devil bellering about them knots tied in his tail. Woo!